Uh, Professor Chris Busby is with me, a former government advisor on radiation, the scientific secretary at the European Committee on Radiation Risk. Uh, good to have you with us, Chris. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, and we have Professor Ian Fells from the University of Newcastle upon Tyne, who is a former advisor to the World Energy Council. Professor Fells, good evening to you. Hello. Well then, what is the lesson that you're drawing so far from what's going on in Japan? Well, first of all, this is the most severe earthquake that uh, they have ever had. Uh, now, the, the, uh, the nuclear power stations in Japan have always been designed to cope with earthquakes, uh, but uh, coping with an earthquake of uh, this ferocity uh, is perhaps something that they hadn't anticipated. It would appear, though, that the actual primary containment of the, of the core of the reactors has not been breached. Uh, and these explosions, which are superheated steam come hydrogen explosions, are, are the outside part, the non-nuclear part of the, uh, of the power station. And they're, they're extremely worrying and all the time. But oddly enough, it's a bit similar to the, the, the Three Mile Island explosion in, uh, in America in 1979, where the emergency core cooling, for rather complicated reasons, didn't work. We had a partial meltdown, some of the fuel. It actually melted the uranium oxide fuel, uh, but in that particular instance too, no, uh, there were no radiation leaks from the uh, reactor into the surrounding population, despite what these days a lot of people think. So it's a very worrying situation, but they seem to have it. They seem to have it under control at the moment. Well, let me turn to Professor Busby, and uh, the mere mention of Three Mile Island, as uh, I think Professor Fells would agree, will certainly ring some rather loud alarm bells. How do you see the situation in Japan? This is very, very similar to the Chernobyl accident, exactly the same scenario. We have boiling water reactors um, in which there's been an explosion, and then there's been a continuous uh, uh, release of information saying every time nothing much is happening, there's not very much radiation, um, nobody's going to be harmed, the levels are below this and below that, and so on. All the same things that happened after the Chernobyl accident, and the, and the, the real... Uh, the real situation with the Chernobyl accident only came out after several days, after several days, and I suspect this is what we're going to have to wait for here. But is, it, is it fair to say that, as I understand it, and um, you'll tell me, uh, that the, the actual structure at Chernobyl was nothing to compare to the ones in Japan, that they're much more advanced? Uh, oh, of course they are, that's right. But, 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 but what has happened here is exactly the same thing, that the cooling water situation, there'd be no cooling for the, for the, for the fuel rods, the fuel elements then will melt, if they melt and they fall down into the bottom of the reactor, there can actually be a nuclear explosion. What, what they are saying at the moment is, is it's a zirconium hydrogen explosion, and it's by no means certain that this is the case, in fact, because we don't get to see in the top of the reactor, and it's inconceivable to me that they haven't flown a helicopter over the top of the reactor so we can look down and see whether what they're saying is actually true. So I, I, I have very big suspicions about this, and incidentally, an awful lot of radioactivity is coming out. We, we have been using a very advanced, sophisticated computer airflow model to model the direction of the wind and luckily it is blowing more or less out to sea northwards along the coast but there's a piece of the coast that moves out with another reactor there and this reactor suddenly registered a high level of radiation sometime after the number one reactor blew and this was due to, to radiation coming from the number one reactor and blowing north along this track which means that, that up to 100 kilometers away from this reactor we're getting um, concentrations of plutonium and cesium and iodine and all of these substances which emerged after the Chernobyl accident and caused significant harm to the population, I have to say. Well, let me put some of those points to Professor Fells. Professor Fells, I suppose one of the dangers is that, you know, we simply don't know the extent of the damage yet, and, but the trouble is there is the potential for something truly terrible to happen with these power stations, is there not? Uh, well, there is, but, but it's a very remote uh, possibility. Incidentally, that this explosion, the, these reactors aren't anything like the Chernobyl ones, which are RBMK reactors, and which we knew had a, actually had a fatal flaw. Uh, and that was a gigantic hydrogen explosion, it's true, which blew uh, material two kilometers into the upper atmosphere. But let's look at what the radiation uh, release might be, and uh, it would be mostly radioactive iodine. Um, now, radioactive iodine has a half-life, I think, of about eight days. In other words, after two or three weeks, it's... 
faded away, it, it, it attacks you by, by being absorbed in your thyroid. Um, and they found at Chernobyl that although quite a lot of children absorbed it, uh, it's quite easy to treat it and the children that had absorbed it not, that have a 98% recovery rate. So, I mean, if, that, if that's anything, that's a, that's a bit of comfort. I mean, the thing that worries me mostly about this is not the radiation release, it's the lack of electricity for a large industrialized country. Rolling blackouts, the prospect is horrendous as far as they're concerned. And getting them back online again is going to take weeks and weeks. And nothing works. The stock market doesn't work. The hospitals don't work. The lifts don't work. If you've ever been in that sort of situation as I have, you realize how dreadful it is. You're not going to worry about radiation releases very much, especially if they're, if they're pretty mild. You're going to worry about just not having electricity. Professor Busby, your answer to that. This is a radiological catastrophe already. It could get a great deal worse. But let's make no mistake about it. This is already a radiological catastrophe, and people will suffer as a result of the radiation and the radioactive radionuclides that are, being, that are being put out from this plant. And incidentally, one of them is plutonium. And in the plutonium reactor, we're going to get plutonium coming out of that already. And plutonium cannot be detected by Geiger counters. It's an alpha emitter. So the readings that they are giving uh, in, in order to reassure everybody, high as they are, do not detect the particles of uranium and, and plutonium which are, being, which are being released from this reactor all the time, never mind whether it's exploded or open or whatever. Professor Busby, I'm afraid we're out of time. Professor Fells, thank you so much, uh, both gentlemen, for joining us. Thank, thank you very you. much.